last September, the billionth Android activation happened. So this is one billion times that someone had activated Android on a device, um, which is a, a pretty remarkable milestone. A billion's a pretty big number. And it only took a little over five years to get there. Uh, actually, a little under five years. So this was a little over five years ago that the announcement of the first Android device happened. And there, um, you can see what it looked like. And they were talking about breaking free from the sweet clutches of the fruit companies. Who are the fruit companies? It's not, uh, well, it's more than one. It's not just Apple. Yeah, Apple was not actually the biggest fruit company back then. Right? It was a Blackberry. That was the, the, why they were talking about fruit companies. And this is what the mobile phone operating system market looked like before Android was released. Um, Symbian was the big dog. This was Nokia and Partners project that um, ended up getting sold to Microsoft for a pretty small amount last year. And these are the, the fruit companies. Um, Blackberry is, is the bigger one than Apple. So a lot of things we think of as sort of inevitable actually changed really fast. Right? This is only five years ago that the, the operating system landscape was very different. The other thing you can notice about this is the actual scale. Right? These are millions. So the total size of the market back then was, was you know, tens of millions as opposed to now hitting a billion devices. Things change a lot pretty quickly. And this is not the actual number. It's a, it's a rough sketch. But so this was the first one. And the question I want to answer is, how did we get to that first one? So where does that story start? OK, good. So it could start when Linus Torvalds created the Linux kernel. And that's certainly part of the story. Does anybody think it should start before that? Virtual machines? OK. So when did virtual machines start? Did they start after Linux? Uh, actually, they, they, there were virtual machines going back to the 60s pretty early. Yeah. Unix, OK, good. So yeah, so certainly Linux evolved from Unix. So certainly it's relevant um, how we got to Linux. We should go at least as far back as Unix. What did Unix come from? Did Unix magically appear? Yeah, good, yeah. So uh, Unix was certainly a, res um, a, a response to Multics. That's a good way of putting it, right? It didn't use the Multics source code. But the, the name is obviously derived from, from Multics, and uh, a lot of the design was. So do we have to go back any further? Or is Multics far enough? Yeah. OK, good. Yeah, so certainly we really want to understand the whole history. History, um, you know, We need to go back you know, maybe before Multics. Um, I'm going to be real safe that I'm going to go back to the beginning. So we'll go back about 14 billion years. I don't think anyone's going to trump me and say we need to go back further than that. Because if we didn't have stars and planets and heavy elements and things, we were probably never going to be able to build Android. So that was certainly a necessary first event. We're going to have to skip forward a little quicker. So we'll skip forward uh, about 13 billion years or so to get to the next uh, important event in this story. 